So this is a little screencast. It might be, I hope you can see it. Um, um, a digital planning program that we use at our school called To Do Is. Um, and it's really great for students and for, for, for me <laughs> and for teachers and staff as well. Um, so it's really great at organizing students' work. It's um, very functional. Um, Chrissy is getting it to play. <laughs> so you'll be able to see as I'm talking through what we're doing here. Um, but what students are able to do with it is they can create their own to-do list. They can use those Friday announcements to, um, to enter their own work here and then check things off as they go. Um, and then there it goes. And then um, they can organize it however they want. So it can have as much level of organization as needed. So students can do like I'm typing in here, just geometry 1.1 homework and then be fine with it. Or they can adapt it and make it say geometry 1.1 homework due September 5th. Um, or geometry 1.1 homework due at 10 o'clock a.m. Um, or I need to work on this at 10 o'clock a.m. So if a student struggles with time management or really focusing on their time, this will send them reminders if they set it to send them reminders um, to, stay, to stay doing what they need to be doing. And so you can add tasks as you're seeing this video do. Um, I kind of showed you some examples of the same homework assignment, but different ways that it can be done. You can also include things like reminders, like my birthday, if you want to. Um, you can also set it to repeat to every year, to every day, to every other day. Um, you could set it to remind you of live session if it starts at like 10 o'clock in the morning and you forget to go there um, often. Your calendar can remind you to go every Monday, Wednesday to chemistry class or whatever it happens to be. Um, you can also with this program share your calendar, share your tasks with someone else. So if you look at the left hand of this video, those are all the projects that I'm on. So some of them are shared with other people, the ones with like a little person icon next to it. And some of those might be like a student in a class that's struggling. I can make their to-do planner for them this way and check in with them and make sure they're doing their work. I can also have it as a team. So I run student council for our school. So we have a student council to do list <laughs> where we share what we're doing in our tasks and what those look like. Um, you can also organize them by section. Usually it's easier when I'm not stressed out and videotaping, <laughs> um, but it's quick. This is a quick little five minute thing to show you that things can be done really quickly to organize and plan. And it takes a little bit of trial and error and maybe sometimes a little failing forward um, to figure out what's going on, but you can, you can play around with it and find the system that works for you as you're going through it. Um, it's also really nice. Christy and I work with a student where we share his to-do list and we can check in with him and say, oh, you had an English paper due yesterday. Were you able to get that done? If not, why not? How is that working? What can we do to kind of personalize your to-do list to remind you to do that thing? Or if there's a math test coming up, have you been able to study for it? Let's talk about some study skills. Let's talk about what this might look like. And you can see you can organize your to-do list in many different ways with section headers and different tasks and assignments as you go along. And then um, I think I'm going to show you, you can check them off as you go too and you earn points. So it's kind of nice too if you're reward based. Um, sometimes students or not students can be very reward based and like getting uh, a little congratulations for doing assignments in a day um, and a little bit of praise for that too. So this can be a really great effective tool. It's just the one we use. I know there's others out there that are similar, um, but the thing I love most about it is the adding other people into your, your planning. Um, so if that is something you struggle with, like Christy was saying, we can show you how to do it. We can work with you as you do it and then help you build those skills as you're doing it. And I think that's the way skills get learned. Um, and it's really flexible and adaptable. We can make things work to meet the student's needs. Um, we can change things up if this is not working. We can find another system that will work. Um, but I think that's the key, is making sure that it's flexible and meeting the student's needs as they go along as well. You can watch the end or you can end it, Christy. It's all kind of the same now. <laughs> all right. Um, so these are some really just lovely student examples. So, when I knew we were doing this presentation, I put a call out to our students and I said, here's what executive functioning skills look like. 
It could be planning, organizing, note taking, regulating your emotions, all those things I said at the beginning. And I said, could you please send me some examples of how you do those things? And explain to me how you're doing them in your pictures. So these, they're from three students. Um, these are what they sent me. And I really love that there's no one size fits all example of executive functioning skills and what helps a student be successful in their learning and in their planning and organization. So the photo um, over here on the left corresponds really well with the one on the right here. Um, this is the same student and their organizational system. They have bins for their class assignments and notebooks so they know where to find them next to their desk. They have some pens and paper um, in those bins. They also have their computer things that they need like headphones. Um, if they have a webcam, they could throw that in there. Um, anything that they would need to run the school. <laughs> um, they could have it in there. They can have a, a tablet to write things down on. They could have their rocket book or note taking. They have everything right there that they need and they can easily grab. Would this organization system work for me? Maybe not, um, but it's working for this student and they're very successful in what they're doing and they decided what that was going to look like and that's how they're being successful. In the picture on the left, you see more of their notebooks, their pins, and so this shelving system is working. It's keeping the student organized. Um, they're happy with what they're doing and if they're not they can change it that's totally fine um, the picture of the computer there in the middle um, was a student who told me that this is the best representation of his executive functioning skills because he has a clean workspace if he doesn't have a clean workspace he can't do his work he can't focus on what he's doing so he really makes it an effort at the end of every day when he's done with his work to clean things up so that he can come to a clean workspace and enter that space every morning and do well. Um, the two at the bottom are from the same student. The one on the left are his notes that he took when I taught him how to take notes. Um, <laughs> I found it really charming and endearing that those were the notes that he sent me. Um, but he, he took those things that we learned in first year seminar and he said he was able to apply them in his other classes and do well in his note taking and kind of change his note taking style as he went along too. And then in the middle is a paper planner. Um, schools used to, I think they still do, uh, brick and mortar schools hand out um, planners that students can write in. And this is an example of him using a planner that worked for him. He, he had a chance to use the digital one and he might change to it, right? So like Christy was saying, sometimes things stop working for us. So it's really important for us to be flexible and be mindful that, you know, I'm actually not logging into my to-do list anymore. I'm not checking that and it's no longer a tool that's serving me. So what is a tool that will serve me? Let's try writing it down and see how that goes. Maybe this planner system isn't going to be the best thing. Maybe I need a full calendar, a desk calendar to help me out. Or maybe I need to make note cards. Or maybe I need to use my Google calendar. There's so many different ways that a student could employ these devices, these things to help them out. But the key is that they're trying, that they're trying things out. They're learning what works. They're learning what doesn't work. And there's going to be some time of failing forward. Um, there's going to be an assignment that gets missed and that's okay. It's not the end of the world. There might be um, some notes that don't get taken properly. That's okay too. We're going to learn, we're going to keep moving, and we're going to keep growing in this and keep figuring out what works for each student. I really love this example. Um, this is not created by me. This is created by a student who um, has been with us for a while, is very successful in what they do, and is very organized in what they do. So she put together a tutorial to help people um, with their organization. So this doesn't have to just be adults telling students what to do. Students can help each other along the way as well. So this particular example is how to organize work. Um, I don't know about you guys, but my desktop is pretty cluttered right now with icons on my computer. Um, I need to organize some things. And this is the way the student does it. She has folders set up, she has folders within folders, and then she has assignments that she's labeling clearly, that she's keeping track of, that she can find when she needs to. And she shared this advice with other students on how to do that too. Um, so I thought it was just a really great, great example. And I think the student maybe wasn't the most organized when they joined us. I think that it took the student some time to learn these skills, to figure it out. I'm recalling that the student missed some assignments occasionally. Um, and those things still happen. 
and it's okay, but this is an example of a student that I would say is excelling in executive functioning skills and even making your community better um, by sharing what she's learning along the way. Ready? All right. So we were thinking of um, what to do next after this. It's, it's nice to hear about things to do for executive functioning skills. It's nice to talk about it and ask questions, but what are some next steps? Um, and the first one I, I didn't even include in here is, oh, I did, I'm gonna get to it, never mind. <laughs> the first one is to practice the skills at home. So that could look like planning together as a family. It could look like um, Fridays at two, we get together and, and talk about what our week's gonna look like, what our weekend is gonna look like. Um, so you're really enforcing those skills that we're encouraging students to do at home, you're enforcing them at home. Um, the best system is the system that a student uses. Um, there's no one thing that I can tell you is going to work. There's no one tool that's going to be perfect for everybody. Um, just like education, there's no one thing that you can do in education that's perfect for everybody. There's best practices, there's things we can recommend as we have, but you really have to trial and error and try things out on your own and figure out what works and have an open mind to that. If something doesn't work, um, it's okay, feel forward. So you you know what you're not going to do next time. So you've already crossed one thing off your list of something that you're not going to be doing. Um, and someone asked a question in the Q&A pod about encouraging a growth mindset. And that's where this really comes in. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. This is pretty, pretty low stakes in middle school and high school a lot of the times. If you're missing like every assignment, <laughs> if you're missing all your tests or if things are happening, then we, we need to talk to Christy <laughs> and, and get some plans going. Um, but it's okay to mess up every now and then. It's okay to learn as long as you're not making the same mistake 20 times. I mean, maybe 21 times. Um, we, can, we can keep working and keep trying with that. It's also important that students learn to ask for help. Um, we are big fans of self-advocacy at the Davidson Academy. Um, this is a student's education. This is their learning. Um, we want them to take ownership of that and reach out when they need help, express what they need help with, and then go to the appropriate people who can get them help and kind of guide them along their journey. And then the other thing I would really encourage students and parents to do is identify which skills need growth. Um, Christy and I were talking before this, we get a lot of parents coming to us and just saying, my, my student struggles with executive functioning. Um, which we don't really know what that means in that sentence. Um, it can mean a whole host of things. So maybe one thing in executive functioning might be a, a place for growth, but they also might be doing a really great job in another area. So it really helps the support team know what areas a student might be struggling in and where they may need to be growing. Um, so that's just from years of working with folks in these, these areas and, and hearing that, that same statement. It's, it's a lot, of, we figure it out as we go along and work with a student and figure out what that looks like, but it does help us and other professionals pinpoint what that really looks like um, if there's more clarity on what executive functioning skills a student may be struggling with or need more growth in. And it's okay, we all need growth. I think sometimes um, families assume if, if there's a struggle in one area, it's just all, all the areas or it's all a wash. Um, and that's absolutely not true. There's so many areas, there's so much room for growth just across the board and in all of our lives, and we're not students, um, that we can still continue to grow in these areas for sure. <laughs>